So I really wanted us to have a look at this very short topic. Grab your piece of paper and let's go. Hello and welcome to MK's Medical Review Series. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. This is here on my YouTube channel where we look at medical topics in depth. Today we're going to be looking at history taking in obstetrics. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon to be receiving notifications of such amazing content every time I post. Grab a piece of paper, grab your pen, and let's go. Now remember when you talk about obstetrics, it's just simply a branch of medicine that's going to be dealing with pregnant women. So the word obstetrics is actually derived from the Latin word meaning obstere, meaning to stand by. So this is going to be this surgical speciality that's going to be dealing with the care of women and their children during pregnancy, that's the prenatal period, during childbirth around the labor and delivery, that's the perinatal period, as well as after delivery, which is known as the postnatal period. The reason why this is quite unique branch of medicine is because it deals with more than one human being at a particular time. So remember that the pregnant woman or the parturient or who may be in labor, the parturient is someone who is in labor, then of course we together with her fetuses or fetus. I did a video on how to present obstetric cases, so if you didn't watch that video, you can click over here and also head over to the end of the video, I'll leave the video tagged at the end of the video so that you can watch the video after this on how to present obstetric cases and how to present obstetric patients. So here's an outline of how we're going to be taking our history. The first thing that we're looking at is our demographics and vital statistics. We'll look at our presenting complaint, we'll look at our history of presenting complaint, our review of system, the current obstetric history, the past obstetric history, the medical and surgical history, the drug history, the family history, the socioeconomic history, as, that, as well as ending in a summary and offering some differentials. Beginning with our demographics and vital statistics, because these are go going to be very important because number one, you want to be able to identify this person. So it's very important to actually get their names. The age is an important thing because in obstetrics and gynecology, remember that increasing maternal age predisposes a mother to many different things. You want to ask about their marital status, their residence, as well as their occupation. Remember also with the age, there is an age of consent for the C-sections, that's above, those are above the age of 22. So generally if someone is below this age, they'll need the guardian, the legal guardian to sign that consent. Then you also want to ask if there's any clinical attendance or it's a self-referral or it's a clinical referral. Ask the number of pregnancies they've had, both viable and non-viable. So you should just ask them. Don't ask them how many pregnancies have you had because most often the mother will give you a response that I've had one pregnancy. Meanwhile, she's had like three pregnancies and two of them actually miscarried or didn't result in a live birth. One is one pregnancy only resulted in live birth. So you should actually keep this in mind when it comes to gravidity. Then... Ask also about the parity and the children that are alive. Remember, these are the number of pregnancies that have passed the age of viability. Ask about the last menstrual period and the gestational age of the pregnancy and the expected date of delivery. Although these details, we're going to get them a bit more in the current obstetric history, but you just want to allude to them in your preliminary opening statements on your history. Then you comes to the presenting complaints, which are the symptoms that they're presenting with. Do not forget to add your duration. Remember, 1 over 7 is 1 day, 2 over 7 is 2 days. Then for the weeks, they're over 52, so 3 over 52 is going to be 3 weeks. Then months are over 12, 4 over 12, for example, is going to be 4 months. So put them in chronological order of the symptoms that this woman is actually presenting with. Then you want to expand on the history of presenting complaint. If this patient was actually referred, where were they referred for? What exactly were they referred for and who referred them. What was done for this patient at the referral center? You want to relate the gestational age to the presenting complaints. For example, if a woman comes in with features of abdominal pains, you want to find out whether this woman is in labor. So you want to ask about history of passing shore, history of lower back pain, history of 
this um, any PV bleeding things that may complicate the labor then there are some questions that you must aim to strike to ask in all the cases of all the pregnant women that you actually see you want to rule out any hypotensive sim symptoms or any history of headaches history of epigastric pains history of blurred vision history of rapid gain weight you want to ask for any history of bleeding especially PV bleeding any history of draining or any history of vaginal discharge you want to also ask about any history of uterine contractions that have become much more frequent and much more regular remember you should have some a good timing interval as to when this contraction started and when they have become regular you want to ask about any low abdominal pains any lower back pain any history of passing this mucus shore which is like this mucus mixed with blood usually going to be indicative that a patient is going into labor you also want to ask if this person is perceiving fetal movements then you come to your review of system which is just like in any other course in any other department we are going to be reviewing certain questions based on certain systems so when you're looking at the central nervous system you're looking at things like headache visual changes seizures fitting which are a fainting rather lightheadedness dizziness when you come down to the cardiovascular system you're looking at things like dyspnea palpitations orthopnea paroxysm of nocturnal dyspnea easy fatigability any swelling of the body or swelling of the ankles when you look at the respiratory system any chest pain any cough if it's cough is present is it productive is it non-productive any blood inside the sputum which is known as hemoptysis with the GIT any nausea any vomiting any diarrhea any constipation any abdominal pains and what are the bowel patterns with the genital urinary system what's the color of the urine any pain on urination dysuria any polyuria or oliguria any blood in the urine which is hematuria any vaginal bleeding or any vaginal discharge if there is a discharge when was it first noticed what is the amount what is the color what is the smell you also want to ask about the musculoskeletal system and the skin any joint pains back pain and swelling as well as any skin rash and after you do your review of system you want to predominantly go into your current obstetric history this is now the history of the present pregnancy you want to ask about the menstrual history because this is very important it will give you an idea of the pregnancy dating so you want to ask about the last normal menstrual period when was the first date of the last menstrual period you want to ask if this woman is sure about her dates whether she has certain LMP or she has an uncertain LMP you want to ask if there are any subsequent bleeds of it within the cycle you want to ask about the frequency of the cycle is it a short cycle is it a long cycle you want to ask about the duration and the quantity how many days does she bleed for this is very relevant in especially the gain cases but you can use this in the obstetric cases especially if you're not so sure about the dates then has she used any contraception in the past whether hormonal or has she been recently breastfeeding then you also want to calculate the gestational age by subtracting the current date from the last menstrual period and of course you also want to do your expected date of delivery using Nagel's rule just simply you add nine months plus seven days to the LMP or you can subtract three months and add seven days to the LMP where you calculate your EDD which is your expected date of delivery now remember if the cycle is longer than 28 days then you should add the difference between the cycle lengths to uh, 28 so that you actually compensate for this the other thing that you're going to be asking on your current obstetric history is the booking which is just the first date of antenatal when did they do this booking where did they do this booking how was the pregnancy confirmed was it by examination was it by a pregnancy test was it by ultrasound scan what was the date of quickening where they first started feeling the fetal movement some people say that it's roughly around 18 to 20 weeks but i've seen some literature actually quoting values around 16 weeks then you want to ask about the antenatal history in that particular pre uh, pregnancy how many visits have they had what was the date of the first visit what was the date of the last visit how many scans did they do in this visit what are the details of the scan what is the placental location what are the number of fetuses in the uterus what's the estimated fetal weight what's the estimated gestational age what's the estimated date of delivery we can actually use an early trimester scan roughly between 8 to 12 weeks to actually help us gauge the age of the pregnancy that's usually one of the very accurate ways of determining the age of the pregnancy you also want to check if there are any lab findings that were abnormal what was the booking HP what was the uh, booking RPR what was the retroviral test uh, when they first came to antenatal 
If they did a blood pressure measurement, what was their booking blood pressure? You also want to get any other significant abnormal findings that you are picking out from antenatal, from the antenatal card. Then you want to ask if this person has been admitted. If they were, what was the reason for admission? What was the duration of admission? What was the treatment given during the admission? Did they recover? Did they incur any complications? Did they receive any medication during antenatal? Ideally, they should have received hematinix, fancida. They should have received vaccinations for tetanus, and they should have also been dewormed. You also want to ask about the past obstetric history, any prior pregnancies, assuming that this woman is not pregnant for the first time. And you must put these in chronological order. You must give the year of the delivery. You must give whether it was an abortion or an ectopic, any significant antenatal complications during that pregnancy. What was the mode of delivery of this pregnancy? What was the birth weight? And what was the gestational age at birth? What was the outcome? Was it male or female? And what's the present condition of this infant? Are they alive or are they dead? If they are dead, what was the cause of death? Then you come to your past medical and surgical history where we look at the deaths, which is pretty much diabetes, history of epilepsy, history of asthma, history of TB, history of HIV, history of hypertension, history of sickle cell disease. You should also ask about a history of twin pregnancies in the prior pregnancies. Then any history of previous operations such as a myomectomy or a previous cesarean section. If they did have a myomectomy, what was the indication? Were there any complications incurred? If they had a C-section, what was the indication? When was the C-section done? And what was the hospital stay after the C-section? Did they have any complications that they incurred? You also want to ask about the drug history. What medications did they take in the past? Are they taking any current medications? If they are, what is the dosage of this medication? What is the frequency? Do not also forget to ask about whether they are taking the hematinics and whether they are also taking any herbal or traditional medicines. Ask also about any allergies to these medications. The family history is going to be focusing on a history of multiple pregnancies, a history of diabetes, epilepsy, asthma, TB, hypertension, as well as sickle cell, because some conditions tend to run in families. Then last but not least is your socioeconomic history, where you want to find out the occupation of this patient. You want to find out the educational status of this patient, where they stay, the number of rooms, the number of people that they're staying with at home, the source of their water, the source, the type of their toilet, whether it's an indoor flushable toilet or it's an outdoor toilet, the family support at home, the financial support at home, whether they are drinking or whether they are smoking. Generally, it's not advisable to drink or smoke during pregnancy. After you now take this history and you write down all this information in your patient's file, you want to summarize the positive findings and the negative findings. Then, of course, you are going to do this before you proceed to go to a physical examination. The important things that you want to include are the name, the age, the gravity, the parity, the gestational age, the main problems as well as the risk factors. So an emphasis is that we do not want to repeat the entire history here. I had someone who once used to say that a good history is like a miniskirt. It is short yet covers the essential parts. So your summaries must be like a miniskirt. And after this, you should offer an impression with your differentials and possible investigations and you can move on to examine the patient and come up with your working diagnosis and your final investigations and how you're going to manage this patient. I really hope this sheds some light on how to approach patients and take obstetric history in the obstetrics department. If it did, consider subscribing to the channel, hit the bell notification icon so you never miss such amazing content every time I post. To Zambia and beyond, my name is Dr. Moses Kasevu. Until next time, bye-bye.